up everybody how are you doing i hope that you guys are doing well welcome back to the nigerian nomad channel so if you guys have been watching my channel you know i've been posting micro updates on this project and yesterday officially marked off the end of phase one and i'm going to go to the apartment and i'll walk you guys through this phasing but uh but before we do that check this out we have something new so the gate here we used to open it upwards and look we now have sliding gates so cool exciting stuff anyways guys i will see you guys inside and i'll give you guys a full summary of all that has happened so far in phase one and i'll break down every step that we needed to accomplish for phase one and we're going i'll see you guys soon all right guys welcome back so as promised i am going to break down all that we have accomplished so far in phase one demolition break everything that we need to break bring out the plaster the cement break down all the walls do all of that stuff pack it all out and then phase two is to now install everything so that means like you know the plumbing fixtures the tiles and all of that stuff but i'm keeping the flooring on the common areas and living room bedroom towards the end after we do all the dirty work there and uh, after we do all of that infrastructural stuff and we screed the place paint a little bit we would now talk about flooring and then we will now bring in the furniture and the tv walls and the cabinets and all of that stuff so that would almost be towards the end and then we will now finish with finishing so finishing is like your curtains your carpets and you know all those little tiny things your art pieces and you know all those things is what's gonna happen. Your flowers, your trash can, all those little minor details to make everything come together. But for now, let's talk about phase one and I'm going to walk you through every single item that we accomplished in phase one. All right, so, and I'll also show you guys videos so you guys can put it together. So since we just came from looking at the gate, I am going to start from the gate. So one thought process that we went through here is this gate, as I was talking about earlier, was opening indoor or outwards actually this one was programmed to open up outwards so we decided to change that whole model to a sliding gate so now we designed the gate we went to purchase it we bring it and we designed it in a way by the way if you guys are doing gates in the future always make sure that when you hire somebody to kind of put together these gates they design it in a way that you can autom automate it later like a remote key fob or like an app from your phone or like uh, something sha to make the gate open. So that is one thing that I feel like you need to consider. So we got that fixed and that checks off the gate. Number two is the breaking of the walls in specific areas of the house to match the new layouts. So number one was the breaking of the kitchen wall to create this open space that we wanted, which is a, a symbiotic relationship between the living room and the kitchen which some people absolutely hate that idea because they feel like if they cook the smell would be everywhere and some people absolutely love that idea uh, because of the communal benefit of having somebody in the kitchen still being able to interact with the person in the living room or if you have kids running around you can see the whole space this one is definitely even better sometimes for families but some people like that shielded so it's like 50 50 but for this design we decided to go with an open sp kitchen space model that has a relationship with the living room and if one is cooking and one really cares about all of that stuff we already have like heat extractors and different things that can get stuff out from the living room the other breaking that is happening as part of number two is the extending of the bq wall to make sure that it accommodates a bed space in a way that there's still a little bit of like walk-in area to maybe add like a little work station maybe to like put a computer or a desk or even sit to eat so that everything doesn't always have to happen on the bed <laughs> so that's kind of like how that design came into play um, and then another breaking that happened is the extending of the balcony window so when i first came to this place one of the adjustments that i knew we would have to make is to extend there was a hallway between the living room and the balcony and I was just thinking, you know what, we can just extend this balcony as I was discussing with the architect and we figured out how to extend it and I absolutely love it. The only dilemma that I was thinking about is figuring out if we are going to have a door in the way that the architect designed it um, and a small window 
or if we're going to have a sliding glass door. So anyways, if you guys have been watching my video, you would know that I ended up with deciding on a sliding glass door and it's making a huge difference. There's so much more natural light coming into the bedroom now, which is amazing. There's even a little bit of breeze. And also if you go outside, you can have room to have, you know, like a little, you know, two or three tables, have coffee or something, or you want to lounge outside. It's just going to be great for that. So that's the breaking that happened on the inside. Now, the other breaking that happened is we needed to transform the external look of the house. So we kind of had more of like a white look, like a spaceship look, which is kind of like a unique look, but we wanted to like make it different from the other styles in the neighborhood. So we decided to change that front white. We're going to put bricks on it. We haven't put it on there, but we're just getting it prepared. And we took on the sides as well. We took out all the bricks down that came with quite a, <laughs> That came with a lot of challenges with the neighbor because we had to continuously access his parking lot to put the scaffold there. We made a lot of mess there, but we finally have it all done. We've raised the fence. We've cleared all that we needed to clear. We've screeded and we've even painted his own side of the wall, which is that one is all good to go. So now that covers the breaking. Now, another thing is since we're completely revamping all of the bathrooms in the house, it meant we needed to remove all the tiles removes all the plumbing fixtures, the toilet fixtures, the glass doors, everything needed to be removed in each bathroom. And we're going to start from scratch, but it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Anyways, so that is also caused a lot of breaking and a lot of like just grinding work to get that up to where it needs to be now. So um, that covers like the breaking of the whole tiles, removing glass doors. We also removed the railing. Um, of the stairs because we're going to change that from that iron railing to more of like a modern look We're gonna put like a glass uh, kind of uh, railing there for the stairs um, That is what was covered in phase one another thing that was covered in this phase one Was the wiring of the house. So long story short after we've done the wiring then the clients now called me that bio I think it would be cool to have these cool smart features and I was like ah -ha. so I, we kind of went into research, figured that out. So essentially what I've been told is that you need a separate type of wiring for the, to access the smart features. So I guess they have like the neutral wire and the original wire. So we had to like, instead of replacing it, I decided that we're going to have both. So we're going to have the whole house wired to be for that smart, all the smart features. And then the regular original wire that's with the house is also going to stay. Now, for you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, these smart home features is being able to like talk to everything around your house through an app or a voice activated uh, system. Maybe you can say like, okay, Google, can you open the curtains for me? Or okay, Google, open the door. Or you can control the opening of the gates, your door, the cameras seen in your house. Everything can be fully automated and people go really, really crazy with this. And you can even layer actions. You can have a routine set like, um, every six o'clock in the morning, play this music, open the curtains, turn off the AC, light up the bathroom. You can do all types of physical stuff. <laughs> Anyways, so we kind of wired the whole house for that. Now, another thing that we are having to redo, again, all of this stuff is like all this tedious work that you don't see when you look at the house, but it's so much foundational stuff that we're setting up. Another thing is plumbing. So one of the plumbing things that we needed to fix definitely is fixing the water pump so we got a new water pump we fixed that one to adjust it but it's also rethinking how this whole infrastructure is set up so um for me i'm always pushing the boundaries a little bit and i am much more towards more of a self-sustainable living approach so naturally if i'm working on a project i would always think of things that we can do that is a little bit more sustainable um but luckily the client that i'm working with is like we are on the same track so it's fun and one of the things that we're going to do, um, you know what, I'll come back and talk about the sustainable things that we're putting in the house later. But let me focus on plumbing. So plumbing, there was a sewage system and some sort of wire system that came in through the kitchen. We had to remove that completely and route it outside so that it, we would have a little bit more like shelf in the kitchen to actually have at least a double door fridge and a wider fridge and a bit more cabinet space. So that's done, but outside of that, 
I'm, I know I'm challenging the team that I'm working with. So one thing that I came that I'm also exploring is the idea of a centralized water heater system. So ideally in Nigeria, let me not say ideally, typically in Nigeria, um, each bathroom has its own dedicated water heater. So like the bathroom one water heater and they're all individual and you can turn them on and off. But being that I've been living in the US for a while, I am so used to like a centralized AC unit. I'm used to like a centralized water heater system, centralized everything. But I want to incorporate that into this house. I've never seen anyone do it, but I want to try it and see if it works. So, um, and actually this idea, I was actually, this idea, there's another idea that came online. So I was thinking centralized water system, great, we're gonna do it. But somebody commented underneath my video that, do you know there's actually a solar powered centralized water heater storage system that you can get? And I was like, what? So I then like did a Google, I did YouTube and I was researching and I was looking for vendors. So supposedly, this exists, which I'm going to talk about in a sustainable way. But anyways, this causes the plumbers to now rewire all the hot water system. So maybe it's the hot water going to the hot tub, the hot water going to the kitchen, the hot water going to the hand washing basin, the hot water going to the shower. All of these things now have to be, they were all piped individually to the water heater, individual one. But all of these have to now be repiped into this centralized water heater storage system that we're hopefully going to have actually yes we're gonna have it on top of the roof um, and I've looked at different models and you guys can see what it looks like so that's kind of what we're doing here all right and then um, so yeah that covers the wiring and then there's a lot of things based on the designs we've had to shift some ACs to a different location uh, we've had to change some TV walls were supposed to be on this wall it was on another wall we had to kind of rewire everything we're also going to rewire for the CCTV the lights all of this foundational stuff is also being done simultaneously as we're doing the others. Now for the plumbing now, we also kind of have to get the right pipe sizes and stuff to fix the faucets, the toilets and all of that stuff. So that is all also has been accomplished as part of this phase. Let me see what else I'm missing. Um, yeah, essentially, I think that's all we have been doing. And this whole phase, I thought it was going to take two weeks, but it took us a month. <laughs> so we're a little bit two weeks behind schedule, but that's just kind of how it is. But there was some additional stuff that was not originally planned that we ended up doing, like the increasing of the fence height was not part of it. So yeah, that added a little bit more work, but I think it's all good. So now let me talk to you guys about, so far, the self-sustainable things that we're doing, or let me just say the renewable energy or solar energy powered system that we're trying to implement. It seems that in Nigeria, people have, people are having a hard time going fully off grid for a lot of reasons. Uh, but I think definitely is the use of the AC system and the batteries, some way somehow, does not have longevity if you're using AC. And a lot of people are not having figured out how to have a 24-hour system fully off grid. So most of the time in Nigeria, you see like a hybrid system where there's like um, the PHCN, like on the national grid light comes from there and then they will have a generator and then they will also have like a like a solar system as like the other as part of this hybrid system and typically the solar system is limited with the ACs the amount of ACs that you can use on it so for us I haven't I, I don't know if it can be fully off grid yet but at least we can reduce the load on the house so one way that we're going to reduce the load on this house um, that I think is going to be a bit more renewable energy is we're going to have a solar powered borehole system. So that way we don't have to run the gen or use the lights from the grid to pump water. And from my experience with managing all these apartments for clients, it seems that you have to pump water almost every day, depending on the size of your tank, or at least every two days. So at least that reduces the load consumption on that. And number two, um, I think we're going to get a solar water heater system and all the systems are completely independent by the way they doesn't interact with the their source of energy is just solar i'm going to post it in the description when i do it of how this works if you guys are not aware of it it's very very cool i don't even know if it uses solar i think it uses the energy of the sun heats up the water mix it with the cold water and then it stores it and then it like redistributes it throughout the house but definitely is a very very efficient green way to do it um so those are the two things so far that we're doing. Then, of course, we're still going to have this solar system for a lot of the lights in the house. 
um, yeah, I think those are the two things that we are thinking of now. Um, at least, to re and my focus now is on reducing load. Maybe over time we'll be able to replace everything. But now that we're in the foundational stages, that is what we are doing. Um, and anything else that can be solar powered, <laughs> I'm going to maximize it. The other, another challenge with solar is what happens at night time. So you now have to have a way to store power in a battery to help get you through the night. But we're making there, I think, progress slowly but surely. Now, um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed kind of like this uh, overview. I just kind of wanted to just give you guys a full summary of everything that has happened in the last month in terms of phase one. So in the next videos, you guys can now get excited and start um, looking forward to all the stuff that's happening inside and just the general finishing of the whole property. So subscribe to my channel if you want to follow updates on this project. Uh, if you like this content, hit the like button. Um, and if you want to check out my other videos about farming, real estate in Nigeria, or just general lifestyle in Lagos, Nigeria, check out my channel, you love it. And lastly, guys, remember, it's your time to rise and let your light shine. Peace.